Hey guys, welcome back to Art of Etude. Let's get right into this. So we've reached the halfway point in the road marathon with Caprice number 12. So I'm using this chance to build on the previous episode and go deeper into the subject of string crossings. First of all, I personally find this Caprice more awkward for both hands relative to the preceding Caprices we've covered so far due to the key and the heavy involvement of the third and fourth fingers in the left hand, in addition to, of course, the string crossings. And it's important here to really preserve and emphasize the dolce character. And therefore, this makes for a very interesting challenge. Of course, this means that every note speaks effortlessly and sparkles, but also that they seamlessly flow into each other to really sustain that legato line. Again, this really reminds me of the third Caprice, which we covered in episode 9, so you can check that out. Starting with the right hand. So each string crossing, no matter how concise the motion, means that a certain amount of bow is being used up. So it's very important to develop the ability to be stable during slower bow speeds. To feel that we're really resting the entire arm weight on the bow is useful here, as it provides a consistency to the sound while we focus on subtler motions in the forearm, the wrist, and the fingers. And of course, when executing the string crossings, the upper arm and elbow anticipate and lead the motion. In the left hand, it's very important to practice placing the fingers in advance of each string crossing and always keeping the motion of the fingers very fast and trying to stay completely still until the very last millisecond before we have to move. Keeping up with this way of working, we can vary things up using good old rhythms. Also something else that we can do here, we can find the double stop intervals and practice vibrato exercises as a good way to warm up and strengthen the left hand, even though it's very important to be careful not to overdo it.
Just to think of some other examples from the general violin repertoire where all of these exercises could be directly applied. One that immediately comes to mind is in the third movement of Beethoven Violin Concerto. So, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you found this video useful, please give it a like, and feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel to follow along in this series, and for much more. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. See you next time.